Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, esteemed speaker and viewer of the session and audience from different parts of the country and the world, good evening from Bangladesh. So we are delighted to make this important session today happen on building a startup ecosystem, which is powered by Impact to Connect and Department of Innovation and Entrepreneurship, Daffodil International University. I must speak well, CEO and founder of Impact to Connect and the faculty of Department of Innovation and Entrepreneurship welcome you all to this session. So I'm very delighted and privileged to host Mr. Ali David, who is the co-founder of Startup Blink today with us as the keynote speaker. So let me tell a bit about Ali before going to the formal session. So Ali is also co-founded uh, Lingolearn.com, which is an online language school uh, with hundreds of students and teachers from around the world. So before that, Ali was uh, working as the accountant and business consultant for Trump's line, uh, BDO, KPMG, uh, I mean, until he decided to take the startup path. So Ali is also a digital nomad, as I am very surprised to know that he moved here and there every time. I thought he's in his country now, but he's in UK today. So he moves more than 20 plus countries in the last four years uh, and constantly changing the location. And, and another thing is he also believed that, uh, I mean, uh, startup path and nomad is kind of similar uh, pathways. So I'll know more about it from you, Ali. So it is also my question to you as well. So, and uh, let me tell you an important thing that is about startup playing. And I am really privileged to be a part of this year's report from Bangladesh as well. So startup playing, playing is the world's most comprehensive startup ecosystem map and also a research center working to uncover the momentum of the startup ecosystem globally and to support their growth. They publish the world's most comprehensive startup ecosystem report, I um, mean, measuring startup activities in over 100 countries and also, I mean, more than 100, 1,000 plus cities, which you can easily download from their website. I will share the link very shortly in this, I mean, below, you will I mean, find the link there so that you can download the report as well. And Lastly, I mentioned that this, I mean, ecosystem map and ranking index have been actually featured in, I mean, many media outlets like CNN, Forbes, Business Insider, and many more. I'll know more about from Ali David. So without further delay, Ali, it is the time to you, uh, for you uh, to share your insights and, I mean, uh, the things you actually do and also your presentation on building startup ecosystem. So Ali, over to you. Excellent, thank you. Thank you, Asif. And thank you everyone for attending today. It's really great. Asif, we, I heard so much about your activities that uh, you're really an <laughs> inspiring example of how to develop ecosystems in, developed eco in developing ecosystems as well. So I wanna really thank you for, for doing what you do. I'm thank sure you, uh, everyone in Bangladesh does the same. Uh, great, so yeah, maybe I'll share my presentation and the... Uh, yeah. Sure. Just a second. Let's see if I can find it. <laughs> it's always uh, the big, uh, big uh, thing. Uh, first of all, it's really great to be here with everyone, and absolutely, uh, like, absolutely delighted to be here with you. And uh, first of all, I, I know that we have a lot of entrepreneurs as well over here. So this is uh, this is something that that I'm always happy to, uh, let's say, connect with more and more entrepreneurs and kind of like, support people. Uh, in their path of, uh, of growth, you know, as they're uh, developing their ecosystem. I'm going to share quickly my screen and uh, see if you can tell me if you can, uh, if you can see it. Yeah. Great. Yeah, it has shared. Super. So today we're going to do a quick, one, quick um, let's say, on a very big topic, which is the best uh, practices of startup ecosystem development. And that's uh, it's, it's a giant topic. We're going to just have a taste of it uh, in this session. And uh, hopefully, if there are any questions, feel free to, uh, to, to approach me. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to also publish my email after this, uh, this uh, presentation. First of all, I'm going to do a quick intro about Startup Link. Then we're going to speak about the importance of startup ecosystems uh, and some guidelines, basically, to uh, to anything that comes to mind on on what do we uh, let's say recommend for the public sector and the private sector to do. They have a very deep responsibility more than anything. By the way, the public sector we're expecting them. Uh, 
to pay us uh, to pay back the taxes that they receive and help us develop the local startup ecosystem it's up to them in in in, in many cases to give us those conditions and uh, i think that uh, that is good for all of us to be aware that this is their role uh, to give you the support as entrepreneurs not 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 necessarily financial support but the support on regulation on red tape and anything that has to do with that so uh, feel free to know that uh, that it's their responsibility as well to help you out uh, once again they're not going to build your startup but they're of course uh, should be there to make sure that you don't have unnecessary headaches let me talk for a second about startuplink.com so that's our global startup ecosystem map it's open for everyone at startuplink.com. What can you do on the map? If you go there, uh, you can filter startups by industry, by location, see co-working spaces, accelerators, leaders, organizations. Uh, you can see the ranking tables that are open for you uh, for 1,000 cities and 100 countries, the, their startup ecosystem, um, also on verticals as well. And uh, you can also see ecosystem dashboards for each city and country summarizing the current situation of cities and countries. Our mission and our goal is to uncover the truth about startup ecosystems and to be in a situation that when you make decisions about where do you go, you have accurate information. So that's something that is very important for us. And that's why we also do those 1000 cities and not only top 20, 30 or even 100. There are many options out there. I want to give you all the options uh, available. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about how do we get our data. You, if you go to Startup Link, you would see more than 70,000 startups. There are also much more supplemented data that is arriving and also being taken care uh, on the rankings that you don't see on the map. So first of all, uh, the map is crowdsourced. It means that it's interactive, it's crowdsourced. It means that everyone can add their startup for free at startuplink.com. If you want to support your city or country, edit uh, i mean it's going to give a boost for the ranking in the next time uh, we also have uh, about 80 uh, local ecosystem partners from around the world there is a link here uh, that is available for public sector and um, if interested this this is a list for example in europe and asia and pacific of course uh, we have much more uh, much more regions as well uh, but just as a as a sample uh, it's really inspiring to work with organizations from both the public sector and from the private sector that are interested to give time and spend resources to promote their startup ecosystem. In many cases, this is the difference between a failed location and a successful location. So uh, that's one more way of us gathering the data. Uh, we also have a few global data partners, for example, Crunchbase, SCM Rush, Meetup, uh, uh, UNAIDS, uh, uh, Findexable, Coworker that we get a lot of data from our partners as well. And I'll say that we're also deploying uh, maps that we get a lot of data uh, from those maps as well. One of them can be seen in coronavirus.startuplink.com. That's a, a comprehensive resource of 1,300 innovations that have to do with COVID-19. Uh, Findexable, another, another organization we work with, uh, deploying their FinTech uh, startup ecosystem map. Uh, so, of course, all those data sources are also supplementing our, uh, our work at startuplink.com. A little bit about the report. The report is pretty interesting. It's 330 pages, so it's a long read. Uh, you can read it at report.startuplink.com, available to everyone. Once again, everything we do, we try to make it free so people are not blocked. Knowledge should be shared as much as possible. Uh, we're talking about uh, hundreds of thousands of users of this report and the index on the map annually. Uh, many hundreds of press mentions annually as well. Really happy to see this thing uh, growing and uh, being used by so many people. I want to talk a little bit about why do rankings matter? Um, because some people will tell you, ah, rankings, you know, um, better not. Uh, so first of all, I want to tell you there are some winners and there are some losers. Uh, the winners have to be celebrators, uh, celebrated. The losers has to be uh, notified. And uh, we, as startups, if we stay in losing locations, we're making a mistake. So our job is to basically let you know uh, if your ecosystem or your ecosystem that you're about to go to uh, is, is actually what you think it is. And that's, that's really something that we do 
uh, uh, religiously, uh, let's say. So first of all, many people are uh, using those rankings for location decisions, and that's why they're important. If you want to go somewhere, uh, relocate, invest somewhere, make a conscious decision about a place that is doing well. So that's important. Uh, rankings also allow you to track progress and do ecosystem analysis and build a strategy for your ecosystem based on what's happening. Uh, what we always say, uh, a startup ecosystem is a product. It's a product. A city is a product as well, by the way. It's pretty really interesting. Um, every product needs marketing. And that's, that's, the, that's the truth. We cannot be shy when we have a startup ecosystem and kind of like expect that people are going to arrive to it and think that it's great. Uh, if we don't market it. It's just like having a startup and having a great product and doing no marketing and sales because everyone is going to arrive anyway, right? So it's not the case, uh, not in startups and not in startup ecosystems. We have to uh, aggressively and effectively promote our startup ecosystem, celebrate them, pitch them, sell them. This is something that we always say, do not be shy and humble when you're trying to push forward your startup ecosystem. Um, and the last thing is that uh, rankings help to change the narrative about the ecosystem. So, for example, if there is a country and city that nobody thought would be successful 10 years ago, those rankings allow us to kind of like understand who are the upcoming winners and who is also in the process of uh, ongoing decline. And that's important. So that's, that's the, reasons, the reasons why we work so hard on those rankings. Um, I want to tell you whether I, I know that we have a lot of startup founders here. Your startup ecosystem matters a lot. Uh, the decision of where you are matters greatly. Uh, the sad truth is that uh, a lot of us are in locations that are not suitable for our ambitions and goals. If you think that your uh, uh, that everything has to do with you, you know, and you can do it on your own. And because your team is talented and you're talented, it's going to be enough. I have to tell you that you're fighting against the waves because being in a location that is underperforming compared to your goals is going to do you great damage. And we have to take time to think about it. The problem with this damage, by the way, is that in many cases, you wouldn't even know uh, that, uh, that there is damage. Why is that? Uh, the real successful startups they have a few defining moments. Uh, some of them are very random. It's the people that we meet, usually, the connections that we have, the opportunities that we have. If you're in a low-performing ecosystem or underperforming ecosystem, it's going to be comfortable. It's going to be great. You will never know the opportunities that you've missed by not being in a big startup ecosystem or a successful startup ecosystem. Uh, San Francisco, London, uh, Bangalore, wh wherever you can think of, that things are happening there. So I totally encourage all of you, maybe that's the biggest uh, uh, takeaway that, that I want to tell all of you, especially the entrepreneurs, to think, to dedicate time to the process of should you stay where you are. It's incredibly important. And you will not understand the importance only when you move. You will understand the importance. Let's talk a little bit about what startup ecosystems are giving you. Uh, they give you access to investors. Investors are unfortunately only located in a few hubs. They are not in the small hubs. So it's important to remember. Uh, investors have the fear of missing out. They basically go where success has happened before. Um, so if you're looking for investors, and by the way, I don't think everyone should, but if you are, do know they're in a specific, in specific set of ecosystems. Uh, Good ecosystems will also give you clients to work with because they're going to be more open-minded to work with startups. Uh, ecosystems will also give you access to co-founders, team members, suppliers. Uh, there's also going to be uh, knowledge and cutting-edge events. Uh, in an ecosystem like Tel Aviv, for example, you have two or three events every day. Uh, now it's coming back after COVID, thankfully. And the idea is that you can just choose where you go to the people that you connect to, the knowledge that you consume. And I think most importantly is that ecosystems, good ecosystems give you, have the right mindset and also give you cultural and emotional support. The road and the path of being an entrepreneur is a difficult one. Uh, you want to make sure that uh, uh, you're in a place where people are cheering for you and you see like-minded people 
and not in a place that has some kind of a closed mentality that would kind of tell you, hey, get the nine, the nine to five job. Uh, so, uh, so that's something that is also important. Now, specifically about startup ecosystems, I do want to tell you that not everyone should be uh, in San Francisco. Uh, it really depends on your goals. And uh, so that means that San Francisco is super expensive. If you're building something that is not that big or is not supposed to take over the world, uh, San Francisco might not be the right place for you. Uh, so you have to, that's why we have 1000 X systems. Uh, the, the only thing is that we're saying is basically try to improve where you are in case your X system is not ranked that high. Uh, and it also depends on the verticals. So I do want to tell you that some ecosystems excel in specific verticals. For example, Shenzhen in China is a great hardware and IoT uh, ecosystem. For example, Shenzhen is ranked below the top 20 uh, in, in Startup Link, but on hardware and IoT, it's ranked number three. So sometimes an ecosystem can be absolutely amazing in the specific vertical that is interesting for you. You have to also do a little bit of analysis on the verticals. Odense in Denmark, one more robotic hub that basically all they have is robotics, but they are one of the best in the world of robotics. So basically the conclusion that we want to share with you is that as for startup ecosystems is that if you are in an underperforming ecosystem, you should either leave your ecosystem or lead it. That's the other thing that I want to tell you. Uh, let's say if you can't leave your ecosystem, let's say you have family, there is some kind of an attachment to the ecosystem, but your ecosystem is really bad, make sure that you lead it as a private, uh, private ecosystem developer. Uh, even if you don't have time, dedicate some time to create meetups, networking events, things that take relatively low amount of effort and resources can make a massive difference, can grow your ecosystem. And of course, also uh, leverage you as a connector. But the worst thing you can do is to stay silent and passive in a bad ecosystem. That's the only thing I have to tell you. So if you can improve to a better ecosystem, if you can't and the ecosystem is not doing well, try to generate a little bit more benefit for all the players in the ecosystem. The pie is going to get bigger for everyone, basically, and especially for the connector, if you choose to take this role. So I always encourage people, take leadership role if you can in your ecosystem, um, and just like Asif is doing. Um, okay, let's talk a little bit about uh, why, and, and I wish more, more governments and public sector would understand why ecosystems also matter economically. So the idea over here is that a great startup ecosystem creates high quality jobs. Those high quality jobs create better knowledge, but more than anything, create amount of taxes that is outstanding for the country. Good startup ecosystem create exits. Exits are being taxed. Once again, a lot of money for the country to invest in education, infrastructure, health, and so on. Good startup ecosystem attract national and foreign investors and entrepreneurs. You get someone else talent, which is great. I do want to tell you, unfortunately, startup ecosystems are competing with one another. They're not cooperating. There can be no cooperation. They're competing on the most important resource there is, which is talent. So if your ecosystem is good, you're going to attract uh, uh, people from the outside. They're most talented people. If your ecosystem is underperforming, you're going to lose your best people. Uh, there's going to be a brain drain in a way. And we've seen it in so many countries and cities. It's the biggest, uh, let's say, uh, tragedy, as we call it of cities and countries, the non-ability to keep your people in the ecosystem. And this happens in more ecosystems than other ecosystems. Like there, there are hundreds of ecosystems that are losing their talent on a yearly basis. They had amazing talent, they lose it because their ecosystem is not doing well enough. And it's a vicious circle in a way. And someone's going to have to stop it in your ecosystem, mostly the public sector, and also people like Asif from the private sector. Good startup ecosystems also give you resilience to shocks. Let's say that every, uh, many countries go through shocks. It can be a war, it can be a pandemic, it can be weather conditions. Uh, as, as we've seen in 2020, whoever has a great startup ecosystem is less affected. Whoever is reliant on things like tourism and so on, uh, and supply and demand classic uh, economy is more affected. So you want to become anti-fragile, have a great startup ecosystem as an economy. Um, the last thing would be to improve your country image 
uh, and its strategic and geopolitical situation. Uh, technology is key. And all countries want to be associated with countries that are successful technologically. Uh, it's, 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 it's something that attracts countries to countries. I can give you an example. Uh, Israel, for example. In, for many years, it had no relations with other countries in the Middle East. Once the Israeli startup ecosystem increased in its success, uh, other Arab countries said, we can no longer give up on the connections with this country, regardless of politics. So uh, I'll give you other example, Estonia, an isolated country um, uh, relatively in the Baltics, uh, surrounded mostly by Russia, uh, created a situation that they have a very strong and attractive startup ecosystem that is known globally. Another example, Taiwan, uh, also facing geopolitical challenges, created a great startup ecosystem, uh, amazing technology of chips, manufacturings, and so on. And they now have uh, additional power. Every country should work on their startup ecosystem as a strategic, uh, let's say, uh, uh, goal. Because the, the benefits of having a great startup ecosystem are just outstanding. And a lot of your governments and public sector and the mayors and so on do not get it. They don't get it. And it's really a pity. So we're trying to change their minds and wake them up. And your, your role as entrepreneurs, as other stakeholders in your ecosystem, is make your public sector understand that if they don't do their work, their work well, the economic future of your country and city has a problem. Okay, a little bit about what we're doing on the uh, report itself. I'm going to speak a little bit about the methodology. We rank 1,000 cities, 100 countries. There are more than 30 different parameters in the formula that we created. Uh, they go into three main baskets. I'm not going to tell you too much about it. I'm just going to tell you that it's quantity, quality, and business. There are many, many parameters, the number of startups, number of co-working accelerators, uh, how many investors are there in each ecosystem, the amount of investment, traction uh, for the startups, um, uh, R&D uh, uh, centers of big uh, corporations, uh, business things like doing business uh, environment, our, uh, uh, internet speed, internet freedom. So we did the work for you. We basically ran a massive algorithm on massive amount of data on our interactive platform. So everything is ready for you. You can view the raw data also on startuplink.com. It's all there for you to browse. Um, what we do is very much results driven. I have to say that our attitude is very much into measuring success. Uh, we are not here to uh, be a teacher and tell you this is good and this is bad and, and you should do more of this and this is more politically correct and this is problematic. We do believe that uh, 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 it's very important to have an inclusive, high quality and fair ecosystem and your results are going to show it. But what we measure is not subjective elements of how we feel or what's our opinion, but the actual results, how many startups, how good they are, how many other results can we, can we measure, unicorns, exits and so on. Uh, I do want to say that the country's ranking is adjusted per capita. So uh, we also check the country's ranking. What I'm going to show you is uh, per capita and not necessarily only on the country absolute strength because we have to take into account how many people are living in each country to understand how, much, you know, how, how well they are doing on innovation. Let me share a little bit about the results. You can see over here, uh, this I just cropped this from startuplink.com. You can see the full tables of 100 countries, 1,000 cities over there. Just go to startuplink.com, scroll below the map, it's all there. A little bit about what's going on currently in the world uh, according to our results. So you can see over here the rankings and the change. Um, just so you're aware of, of basically the, the biggest trends. Currently, there are three countries that we call the, free, the big free club that are very unique, that are per capita, producing a lot more innovation than all, no, all other countries, and they have a very big gap from the other countries, United States, United Kingdom, and Israel. Uh, then you have other countries that are following, Canada, Germany, Sweden, uh, and so on. Uh, I'll just tell you that uh, we, we can go over the results now because it's going to take too much time. Small countries can have outstanding results. You have countries like Israel, like Estonia, like Sweden, Finland, Singapore, outstanding results and they're in the top 15 in the world. So I, I mentioned the now five countries that have much less than 10 million population and they're still managing to have to rock it in a way. 
And I want to tell you about the notable gainers, the people, the, 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 the countries that most has the best momentum this year. Sweden uh, arrived to number six in the world. China increasing by seven. Uh, Singapore increasing by uh, six. Uh, United Arab Emirates, absolutely great year with plus 18. Taiwan, a great ecosystem, uh, also increasing. New Zealand, Malaysia, also on a good trend. Uruguay, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Kazakhstan. Some locations that were not connecting so much with entrepreneurship. Some good things are happening in the places that I just mentioned. Some notable decreases, Netherlands, uh, Spain, Serbia, Greece, Ecuador, Azerbaijan. Some locations that are uh, that drop the ball a little bit and, uh, and, and are not enjoying such a good momentum. Uh, be aware of those places when you relocate. Um, some new countries, Costa Rica, Mauritius, Namibia, and Ethiopia this year that made it to the top 1,000, so we're really happy uh, about that. Let's talk a little bit about the cities. You can switch, by the way, in startuplink.com. There is a button to switch between cities and countries. So uh, I'll just say that uh, on the cities, no surprise, San Francisco, number one. Uh, I do want to tell you that San Francisco in 2015, uh, 2019, the score of San Francisco that you can see over here was five times higher than New York. And in 2020, it was four times higher. And now it's three times higher. So I want to tell you that although San Francisco is heavily number one with a massive gap, the gap is narrowing every year. So it's something very interesting. Someone has to wake up in San Francisco. Other than that, I can tell you that there are seven strong ecosystems in the world that if you're thinking about changing the world, those are prob probably your ecosystems. We're talking about, ecos about San Francisco, New York, Beijing, Los Angeles, London, Boston, Shanghai. Why do I say seven? Because you can see that the total score of those seven is much higher than anyone that comes below them. That means that there are the mega hubs. Um, I do want to tell you about the top 10, something about the top 10, because in addition to the, to the cities that I mentioned, there is also Tel Aviv, Moscow, and Bangalore. Currently in the top 10, you have six international hubs, which are uh, basically for people who are building products for all over the world. We're talking about the Americans ones, San Francisco, New York, Los Angeles, Boston, and also, uh, uh, sorry, uh, London in the UK and also uh, Tel Aviv in Israel. Those are international strong hubs around the world. You have two closed hubs, uh, which are the Chinese one, uh, Beijing and Shanghai, absolutely great ecosystems. But I do want to tell you, maybe you shouldn't run there. Why? Because they're only targeting the Chinese market. The Chinese market is big enough to basically create a, a lot of impact and allows you to have a closed garden ecosystem. And you have two hybrid hubs, which are a combination between domestic and international, that would be Moscow and Bangalore. So that's kind of like the, the idea. I want to tell you about the cities that have increased the most this year. Shenzhen in China, Jakarta, Salt Lake City, Dubai, Istanbul, Bangkok, and Cambridge. Full results, once again, startuplink.com, and you can download the report at report.startuplink.com. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to speak a little bit about some of the challenges that we have as we are developing startup ecosystems. Uh, what is the reasons where, where if our ecosystem is not good enough? Uh, what are the reasons for that? We're going to start with uh, some psychology. Uh, psychology is very, very interesting. And the deeper reasons for ecosystem success are main, mainly mindset related. Um, what do I mean? I mean that if you're talking about why is an ecosystem not successful, if you dive dig, if you dig deep, deep enough, you would see that it's actually a psychological problem. So for example, you would say, we don't have enough investors. That's a great reason. But try, um, try to do the why exercise. The why exercise is basically, it's a good exercise, by the way, for a lot of things when you want to understand them. Why? Ask, all, ask yourself all the why and try to understand. So usually it's going to be, we don't have enough investors. And then you're going to ask yourself why. And it's going to be because there are not enough good startups, let's say, that justify investment or show that you can get investment. And then you ask again, why? And then you see that the, most of the talented founders that could have been in the ecosystem actually chose to have a nine to five job. So the idea is that if you drill down on the why, you understand the real reason for the success or failure of a startup ecosystem, usually it would have to do with psychology. 
a, and a culture of a specific location, like how, what is the social, let's say, um, uh, direction it takes. So uh, the idea is that um, every ecosystem is a story, basically. And this story is shared with the entrepreneurs, by its entrepreneurs, uh, and there are a set of common behaviors and perception that actually grow an ecosystem or make it uh, collapse. For example, uh, risk aversion. Um, I'll give you an example from two countries. So first of all, let's start with uh, uh, Greece and Portugal. If you are in a situation that you got a job at Google in Greece and Portugal, I really don't envy you if you decide to build a startup and tell your family that you're, uh, you're, uh, you're basically uh, quitting uh, Google or Facebook. Uh, that would create a lot of social pressure. The same uh, example is for Israel. If you stay long in Google and uh, Facebook, uh, your family and friends would kind of tell you, that's great, you have a good job, but why don't you try your own thing? You know? And I have to tell you, this um, social pressure either to become an entrepreneur or to hold your nine to five job is one of the main reasons of why an ecosystem is successful compared to a failed ecosystem. Uh, other, other things that we notice that there is sometimes negative image of successful entrepreneurs, usually in communist uh, countries. Uh, if the, if, so basically the idea is as following. In a good startup ecosystem, you see someone that is uh, successful and you would probably say, uh, wow, I'm so happy for them. Like they, they've done really well uh, and uh, um, you know, I'm super happy for them. In a bad startup ecosystem, when you see, a, 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 let's say, a, a, an entrepreneur that is successful, usually people would think that they manipulated the system, that they basically created some kind of a manipulation in a way. So that's kind of like the, 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 the difference. And it's critical because everyone also has an ego. And if you know that if you're going to be successful, people are going to say, um, he's a manipulator is that, or she's a manipulator. They're not a good person. You don't want to. You, you don't want to build a startup in this space. A lot of a lot of the reasons why people build a startup is also to uh, be some kind of heroes of their country and of their city. If nobody's celebrating them, somewhere else to where they're going to be appreciated. Uh, there, there are also ecosystems where you have total lack of trust. Uh, if you don't have a lot of trust in the culture and the mentality of people, there is no way to find co-founders. You're always going to think someone's going to take your idea. So you're never going to share it and, uh, and convince someone to join you. Uh, you're not going to find investors because investors will say, oh, you would just take my money and run away. So trust is a key element of an ecosystem. And the levels of trust change from one country to another. My advice to you, go to a country that has a high level of trust. Uh, another thing would be insufficient celebration of success stories. Sometimes, you know, uh, we, we, we build something and nobody talks about this because we're too humble. For example, in Scandinavia, when you have a massive success story, people, you would not even tell people about it because you don't want people to feel like you're bragging. But those success stories, this bragging creates a situation that you can actually um, get more people to the game because everyone is saying, I also want that. I also want a part of this success in a way. Let's just a, a few, few examples about the deeper root challenges of a startup ecosystem. Uh, however, we should also speak about you know, the basic challenges or what is, what is kind of like a pairn. Some, some ecosystem uh, uh, challenges include lack of capital. Uh, we're talking about investors, loans, um, uh, self-funding options. Uh, we're talking about lack of government support, bureaucracy. Uh, uh, the, this, this one is killing, uh, killing startups, basically. When you have too much bureaucracy, and uh, 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 like red tape, it can drive you crazy because startups are so stressful that if you feel like people are adding to your pain with administration and bureaucracy, you would not be uh, in a situation to build a startup with a clear mind and you will, you will not be successful. Um, another interesting uh, challenge would be too much government support. So in this case, basically, uh, you would be in a situation that uh, and it's interesting because everyone says, hey, the government is not supporting enough. In some cases, governments that support too much create an environment of zombie startups. They basically, because you get supported, the minute they stop supporting you, you don't know what to do. So basically, you built a lot of things on a white cloud that didn't really exist. 
in, in many cases, they can also create a situation that they support you so much, they help you with investors and so on, presentations and so on, that you don't know how to do it on your own. By the way, the European, European uh, countries, many European countries are over supporting the startup ecosystem. And that's why European, uh, by the way, startup ecosystems are underperforming compared to what you would think they would do. Um, of course, needless to say, lack of basic infrastructure, if you have slow or expensive internet, uh, that's a death uh, for the startup ecosystem. Co-working spaces, also important, accelerators and so on. Uh, other things that are uh, impacting a startup ecosystem, and please note that I'm giving you a total mix because startup ecosystems are so chaotic. There is no recipe of building a good startup ecosystem. What works here would be a disaster there. Uh, so, for example, low cost of living can be a problem. Why? Because if you have low cost of living, you might be pushed to be a freelancer for uh, employers or startups outside of your country and not build your own country. So you get so much money that you don't want to build a startup. But in the, in the flip side, high cost of living uh, basically means that you can start a startup because it, the place is so expensive that you can't stop quitting your job in a way. So I just want to show you that it's so complex. There is no single way of building a successful ecosystem. You have to analyze each ecosystem and understand what are the exact conditions in each one of them. Um, and yeah, I think those are, I think I'm going to do maybe one or two more slides because again, this topic is so extensive. I'll just say, uh, mention a few public sector government policies that will help your ecosystem. Basically, the, the role of the, of the public sector is to help entrepreneurs to fulfill their potential, not do the work for them, but help them to make what they need to do without you interfering them or without any laws or, or uh, bureaucracy and so on or bad infrastructure interfering in them. So the idea is that if the taxes are high, if the registration policies create uncertainty, that I want to register a startup, but I don't even know how to do it, and the uh, admin person in the desk is telling me, no, bring me those documents and those documents and so on, uh, uh, they create a lot of fear, confusion with founders. It's over, because when you build a startup, it's so difficult to begin with, add to that, a mess by the public sector, you're out. You're going to go somewhere else. Uh, we talked about this. It relates to over bureaucracy. You want to make things simple for your entrepreneurs. Uh, I do want to say that uh, uh, we talked about micromanaging and over support that it can be problematic. And the conclusion is generally that if the government can only do one activity to support its ecosystem, it's not going to be giving money to people or whatever. It should only be to make sure that you remove roadblocks for entrepreneurs, to make sure that they can run forward without hitting your own roadblocks in a way. Uh, so it's kind of like important in the sense of uh, the government. Uh, some tactic step or strategic steps of, of startup ecosystem development, there are many of them. We're working with a lot of clients on them. Uh, first of all, invest in the promotion of your ecosystem globally and nationally. It's not logical that you as a government official uh, think that startups should pitch, should pitch their startup, but you're not pitching your ecosystem. The people that we work with are constantly pitching and marketing and selling their ecosystem just like a startup would. And those are the people we like to work with. Um, one more thing would be uh, to give the first push for your ecosystem. You have to understand, when an ecosystem is just starting out, okay, uh, there is no reason for the private sector to invest money in your ecosystem. Uh, the idea is that there is no reason to start a co-working space because it's going to be empty. There is no reason to start an accelerator because there's not going to be an opportunity for investment. It has to build itself. So our role as a government is to basically look at the startup ecosystem like a snowball that is rolling. Every avalanche, giant avalanche, start with a small snowball. Our role is to start and start with the snowball. Push it, push it, push it. And then when the snowball is getting a lot of... Uh, uh, speed, move out of the way. You're not needed anymore. Leave it to the uh, private sector. One more thing that we encourage the, um, the ecosystem developers to do is to build databases, maps about startup ecosystems, because many people do not know who is working on what. You can build a project. Uh, there is someone a few blocks from you working on the same project in the same style. You don't even know that you compete, not to mention that you could have actually partnered in the initial phases if you know that they work on the same thing. 
Um, and yeah, basically the most important thing, once again, remove the roadblocks, create favorable legislation, make life easy, give incentives for both startups and investors. It makes a lot of sense. Um, maybe the next, the, the last slide that I'm going to do before we go back to a sleep is that just to say that the startup ecosystems, uh, they take off after big success story. There is always one big success story, a unicorn or something like that, that makes the biggest impact. So uh, try to get to this success story. Nothing beats uh, success. Uh, I, however, I, will, I, will, I do want to say big success stories take a lot of time. We need to get it moving. You know, a unicorn, there is no uh, ecosystem that is bad and then generates a unicorn. It doesn't work like this. First of all, uh, you have a milestone of the first startup uh, uh, getting investors, investors in $1 million, then 10 million then 20, then 30, and only then a unicorn arrives. They don't arrive out of nowhere. So the idea is to hit milestones and keep on progressing. Um, and once again, about sharing and celebrating success stories, that is absolutely uh, critical. Uh, and make sure that people are not leaving. You identify some kind of a star in your ecosystem, ask them, what do you need? How can I help you? To make, they're going to leave at some point if your ecosystem is way backwards. But make sure that when they leave, at least they have some roots uh, like an R&D center or a few team members that are staying in the ecosystem. If they leave too early, they almost make no impact over their startup ecosystem. And yes, if I think we covered so many things that uh, maybe maybe we can uh, we can back, get back to you and uh, you know for a few questions. This is a topic I have to say. Uh, we just did a training session of twenty four hours of startup ecosystem development. <laughs> exactly. Twenty four hours, but yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So it was really wonderful to hearing uh, such a nice presentation and people who are watching us, they are appreciating the presentation, whole presentation basically. And uh, so they have a lot of questions and you have covered a lot of things actually. Um, like um, one of the things that catches me uh, mostly that is uh, the government support. So we initially, a lot of questions come uh, to us and many other sessions I have found that the government support to the startup. But uh, you have told that is very important to the only activity of government can do that is, I mean, uh, demolishing the roadblocks for the startup. So that is really crucial. So there are a lot of other questions coming. So one of the questions come that is, uh, we have found that the capital cities, I mean, uh, for example, in the Bangladesh, there are uh, 64 districts or cities we have, but still we have found that every startup are based in our capital. I mean, one city is growing and not other cities. So for them, what is your suggestion? How we people actually can empower the other cities as well uh, to bring up more startups? Yes, yeah, so I do want to say big cities have an unfair advantage. There is nothing we can do about this. If you have a city yeah. with, uh, let's say, five times more population than another, it's going to be very strange if the ecosystem in the small city is going to be better. There is an unfair advantage of size. However, uh, the government should always remember that relying only on one city doesn't make a lot of sense. It can, like, you always need backup. Uh, you always need the next ecosystem, uh, and you don't want to be in a situation that one ecosystem is totally deleting all the others. I'll give you an example, for example, uh, uh, Paris in France. This is such a dominant ecosystem that it doesn't allow all the other ecosystems to grow. Amsterdam in the Netherlands, the same. And sometimes, by the way, I want to tell you, uh, cities are competing with each other, also national cities. And uh, we have to remember this. Uh, there is, uh, like, usually the capital city is getting all the talent. All the talented people from the small towns are going to the, to the, to the capital city. Capital city. We have to make, we have yeah. to make sure that people are staying as much as possible. And that requires a very active mayor and a very active uh, public sector, a municipality and so on, that says, we're not giving up. We're building an ecosystem and we're receiving resources from the government to make sure that we at least have a good place that most people can stay. Maybe not the most ambitious ones, but, but at least some of them. Uh, this diversity is very important. It's basically the slow death of a city is if, especially in the new digital age, is if they cannot sustain uh, innovation in their ecosystem, they will just see everyone ambitious going away. And we're not going to build anything like this. Yeah. 
Okay, so uh, thank you so much. Uh, so uh, it's wonderful. So another question come. I, I have seen this in the in the, in the uh, screen. So that is, what is strategies can promote startup growth in developing countries? So uh, you have also told this in your presentation. But in short, can you can you tell uh, this to the I mean audience? Yeah. So first of all, I would say always try to uh, celebrate, like uh, uh, ask, ask the people that are successful also celebrate, them. put them in magazines, put them in newspapers and so on. I would definitely do that as well. The idea is for you, just like you have a startup and every small success, every new client that you get or any new milestone, that, a small investment, it doesn't matter. You want a small price, it doesn't matter where, you as a startup, you're going to market it like crazy. The same goes for the city. You need to market whatever good thing is happening. You're, you, you got a good ranking on Startup Link or in another place. Market it. A startup received $5 million investment. Market it as well. Like Make sure that whatever is good, you market it. Uh, you, you scream it from the rooftops in a way. It sounds a little bit bragging, but there is no way around it. I'll, I'll say again why. why. Why is this so critical? Startup ecosystems are basically about psychology and about culture. People, what, what can we do? Most of us are working by copying other people. So for example, where I'm from originally, from Israel, what happens in Israel is that you have a lot of exits. So you see your neighbor is now a millionaire. He was studying with you in the high school. He was more stupid than you. You remember he was more stupid than you. And it also, if they did it, why can't I do it? So the idea is that if we have the same situation in Bangladesh or, or in places like South America and so on, and you hear about your neighbor being super successful, that's, how, that's where you as a, as a young person or even as an older person decide, I'm going into the game as well. So the promotion is critical over here to make sure that people are interested to become entrepreneurs as well. So that's kind of like the, the idea in the promotion. It's psychological. It will influence your, your population to basically go more into startups, I do want to tell you the startup path is incredibly difficult. Uh, financially, it's incredibly difficult. If you don't promote it and create hype around it, no rational people will do it. So that's kind of like the, the, the idea over here of the over promotion that we really believe in. Hey, wonderful. So I hope I hope you got the answer. So another question you can see in the screen that is how do you calculate this rank? I mean. Uh, He's telling about the startup Blink's ranking. So he just wanted to know the ranking. How do you do the ranking? So you can see the question in the screen as well. Yeah, that's great. Uh, so let me explain to you how do, I, how do we do that. We basically run a giant formula. So this formula would have many, many parameters. And we will have the same sets of data for all the countries and the cities on things that we can measure across all countries and cities. Uh, we will measure things like how many startups are there in each location, how many co-working spaces, how many accelerators, how many influencers, how many meetups, how many global events. So that's going to answer the question of how many. And then we're going to give a rank on the quantity score. We're going to do the same for uh, quality. So we're going to check how much traction the startups have uh, using similar web, SEMrush, and other, other elements as well. Uh, we're going to check how many unicorns there are, how many scale-ups there are, how much investment there is, and so on. So kind of like the idea is R&D center. So the idea is to add more and more things that indicate the result of your startup ecosystem and rank it according to that. So we can have exact results for each uh, ecosystem there is. OK, so thank you so much for answering the question. So another question come that is sustainable ecosystem and entrepreneurship. So th this could be uh, something very important. So. Uh, when you tell about sustainability and uh, I mean sustainable ecosystem uh, for the entrepreneurship, so what are the uh, key factors you should look at? Yes, uh, I have to say I don't believe that much in sustainability. Uh, I'll tell you the truth. I believe in economic uh, economic value. Uh, I think that the world uh, does uh, give us uh, benefits if we create something of value. People are willing to pay for it. If they're not willing to pay for it then you have a value proposition problem. Uh, so it's something to think about. Uh, as for sustainability itself, you do want to make sure, and this is the role of the government, if someone is doing something that is illegal or has bad effects, for example, I'll tell you the truth, I don't like cigarettes. And I see the craze of vaping and so on, and I would say, I wish governments would do more to block this, but this is a government decision. You as an entrepreneur, 
do whatever you can to basically uh, uh, build something that has evidence of people uh, being interested. And in how do you know if you solve a thing for people that you create a real solution? They pay for it. So in a way, I, I really believe that uh, uh, your way of understanding if something is sustainable is to understand if, if you're solving enough problems for people to pay for it. Uh, so that's kind of like the idea. I do encourage a lot of you, if you're working on, on, on sustainable technology and so on, you will be rewarded because now governments are also giving a lot of money for sustainable technologies, renewable en energy and so on. So um, if you're interested in this field, there is a lot of economical benefit. I will just tell you, whatever you do, don't rely only on governments. Make sure that your solution is creating actual uh, um, value to the world so you can actually get paid as well because you want to be dependent on yourself, not on, not on grants and not on... Uh, that's why I always say to people that apply to grants, a government grant and can't make it, you're probably better off because now you have to do it on your own, on the, the revenue that you receive from your clients that care about what you build. Wonderful. So, uh, so I have the last question in my hand. That is the, I mean, we have found that I mean, the mindset is one of the critical issues or critical problem in in countries like us. So, from the early childhood, we have seen that our parents uh, are telling our uh, children that you have to do, uh, I mean, be the doctor or engineer or something like this. But no one is telling that you. Uh, you can do some business by yourself or something like this. So building mindset and the role of uh, institutions, I mean, school, college or universities. So any suggestion on this regard? Yeah, you know, our parents want a uh, uh, family. They want a stable future for us. And I think they're right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. so first of all, uh, as far as they're concerned, they want every one of us to be successful and happy. And I have to tell you, startups are incredibly difficult. Uh, and of course, you know, the, better than me, as if the, the chance of success, we're talking about 10% chance. So uh, if someone would tell you, hey, how about jumping from this mountain and there is 90% of you uh, dying when you jump and only 10% of you floating in the end, you will probably not jump. However, uh, we also want to create things. You know, life is too short. And uh, you want to work on your own project sometimes and not necessarily have your boss or whatever and think about what if. So what I recommend to people is uh, if you do have an entrepreneurial mindset and not everyone should be entrepreneurs. I actually tell you most of the population should not be an entrepreneur, 100%. Our psychology is not geared towards this massive uncertainty. But if you do, um, do it for a limited period of time. Make sure that if you fail and there is a high probability of you failing, there's not going to be massive uh, implications for you that are going to be uh, in your life in 10 or 20 years. Yes, it will be painful. There will be some financial implications. Make sure they're not crazy. Make sure that you also know when to cut your losses. And then you can get back to the real life and your parents are also going to be happy with you. Uh, let's say uh, even after you had an, a failed experience of four years. Four years out of your life, it's not that much to do something special so i do recommend <laughs> to people to to jump if they can yeah so i have last question i must have to ask this to you so one of the question come from the audience that is what are the chances chances of building an unicorn from and developing ecosystem and to do it what should be the strategies in the beginning excellent uh, yes, so let me tell Plavon uh, the following. Uh, if you are trying to build in an underperforming ecosystem, you're trying to build a unicorn that approaches global markets from the go, uh, you're doing it wrong. You have to go somewhere else, unfortunately. However, in a developing ecosystem, there are also massive opportunities. We've seen many unicorns that are targeting only the domestic market in Brazil, in India, uh, I think I think you can even see not unicorns but scalable even in Bangladesh and and, uh, and other places. So the idea is that if you're trying to build something amazingly big and you're in the developing ecosystem, you should do it only if you're targeting the domestic market and you want to become the Amazon, let's say, of Bangladesh and so on, or the Uber of Bangladesh. That makes sense. The question is, is there enough meat there to actually become a unicorn? But if you're trying to build something that is global, a global unicorn and you're in a very underperforming ecosystem, unfortunately, I can only advise you to move somewhere else like London uh, or New York or San Francisco because uh, there are limits. And just like we said, startup ecosystems develop slowly. 
So if you have very, very high ambitions, probably go to a place that can accommodate it. Uh, I always recommend if you can stay, uh, but, uh, but know that, uh, that you're limited also by the status of your ecosystem. We have to remember this. Absolutely right. So you you are you actually uh, this is very true that I mean many of them many of the people actually think that they are do something for the whole world, not following their I mean uh, I mean local ecosystem. So that is one of the thing I found uh, I mean done wrong by many of the uh, young startups. So thank you so much for the suggestion. Just let me sh share uh, two things. So one is in in country of I mean Bangladesh we we are. I mean, not very new, but we are trying to improve uh, uh, from our side. And nowadays, government is really helping us to build a really uh, great ecosystem. They are build, they have built their uh, own venture capital uh, farm and also supporting all different startups. Not only that, they have given the free of, of office space. I mean, the co-working, they are doing the accelerators, incubators by themselves and supporting. I mean, from all the aspects to the startups and not only that, and as, as being part of the whole ecosystem and also being a part of the university, we are doing a lot of things to help our startups. As, as you have seen that this program is also hosted by Department of Innovation Entrepreneurship, which is the partner of Startup Link for this year as well. So this is the only department who actually uh, try to support the startups or build entrepreneurs uh, not we are not following the traditional uh, i mean teaching and learning method so so that we can bring more startup on board in the coming days uh, so thank you so much ali for being uh, such a i mean what can i say i mean up to i mean i have i'm doing a lot of programs but somehow this is one of the most i mean as as a as a organizer i can say it is one of the most successful program of mine because people are really appreciating uh, the whole program uh, so much and not only uh, they are sharing like you can see the comments and so on like i'm getting a lot of messages that this is such a wonderful presentation and this is all because of you because you have sh uh, shared something uh, very realistic not not something very over ambitious or something like this so thank you so much ali for uh, uh, for joining us and uh, i mean sharing your valuable thoughts uh, and as an ecosystem builder, it will actually also help me uh, to rethink and rework on my ecosystem to help more startups and building a sustainable ecosystem as well. So any last thought uh, for the whole audience and uh, the people who are watching you and us today? Oh, I just want to thank you also, Asif. You're doing amazing work. Uh, I have to tell you, your work is known globally. Uh, I heard about it several times from different people. So <laughs> that's, uh, that's really great to see how, how active you are and how successful you are in your activities. And uh, now I know m many people here probably had the uh, Eid Al-Adha, so Eid Mubarak, Viltadvik, Vilnadjah, Likulkom, Inshallah. And I just want to tell everyone, uh, build something uh, don't don't wait for the government. Don't wait for anything. Uh, try to build something of your own. It's really fun, and, uh, and then uh, you know you're gonna be feel feel happy as well. So hopefully we're gonna have uh, a lot of uh, entrepreneurs here that are building things. And yeah, thank you everyone. Thank you. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ali. So uh, this is just the uh, beginning and we will do a lot more together in the coming days. And I hope our audience will join us in the future programs as well. So thank you for being so patient uh, throughout the whole session and uh, uh, supporting us, uh, giving your uh, comments and uh, I mean, uh, questions to inspire us to do more in the coming days. So thank you so much, everyone. So that's all from my side and see you in the next program. So thank you all.